方是古巴首都哈瓦那，现在是当地时间四月二十号的早上八点。We're here in the capital city of Cuba, Havana. It's the morning of、uh, April the twentieth. It's eight o'clock here, and through Baidu CGTN, I am、uh, bringing you this live streaming. Today, we're going to take you into the artistic world. The thirteenth Havana Biennial is opened. Till May the twelfth, it's held every two years. This year, we attracted three hundred artists from fifty-two countries. They brought us with diversified sorts of works, and they are shown in the museum locally. And this city of Havana is giving out strong sense of art. Today we are quite honored to have invited an artistic friend, Mr. Su Zhu Yang. He is a researcher about the Cuba art. Welcome here. Hello, everyone. It's my honor to be part of this show. I hope that we could share with you about some fantastic works of Havana Biennial. I heard that you've been part of many international exhibitions. Could you introduce to us about Havana Biennial and what are the highlights this year? Havana Biennial. Has been a very important festival and exhibition. It's founded in 1984. Since then, it's been designed to exhibit some local arts and culture in Latin America. And every year, we will see the artists from and galleries from the third world. To present their works, and this year one of the major highlights is that、uh, since in 2017 the city was hit by tsunami, so that year didn't witness a such a festival. That's why the 2019 festival is the one exhibition in four years. That's why it's quite extraordinary. Let's see where we are. We are on Havana Seaside Road. It's about seven kilometers land in length, and on the opposite side of the river, it's the old town of Havana. It's a very beautiful sight. And today, we will see some modern arts shown along this seaside road. For a city with 500 years of history, we can see the collision of modern art and the old history of the city. The total length of the corridor is about five kilometers, exhibiting about 60 artists' works. On the opposite side of the bank, there will also be some exhibitions of the artistic works. We're gonna go to the easternmost side of this seaside road. Now let's go towards that direction. As a scroll researcher. What's your take about the role of scrolls in modern art or in a city? Scrolling is actually the same as the other forms of public arts. It's beyond the arts in museums or galleries. Scrolls are usually seen in the public spaces of civilians. And it enjoys close contact with the common people. Through the form of scrolling, artists are communicating with the public and inspiring the thoughts of common people. It's quite direct and straightforward. We are already at the site of the first collection. While we are walking this way, we could hear the clinging of those metals in the wind. They are gathering those different colors and different sizes of metal pieces together with the binding of those uh, uh, steel and iron lines, and they hang all of those metal pieces together based on such a circular structure. What is the meaning of that collection? The artist put on those different metal pieces. The artist comes from Chile. One great thing about that artist is that usually he he could feel 
the effects from the nature with the interaction with the nature, he could come up with some artistic work. The name of this collection is called the Invisible Bell Tower. You could see with those alum aluminum alloy pieces bind together. It's sending out to some uh, sounds. It's like um, a guard of the ocean for the ships sailing on the ocean. If there are some sunlight reflected from the sun, uh, there will be some signs sent to the sailors. Sometimes when the light is not strong enough, we can even, based on the sound of those metal pieces colliding together against each other to judge about the direction. So by hearing the sound, it's like the guardian of the sailors. And it's a combination about modern art and the historical town. My comment is that maybe because of the sound of that metal pieces, it's like the functionality of a bell tower. In the current international circumstances, what is the role of such a collection, particularly through the form of a sound? We could reflect upon the meaning of sound, particularly in a Latin American country, which are mostly developing countries. Are they just giving out their own voice? So that's maybe the symbol of that collection. In the night time, when I was driving Passing by this avenue, I saw some reflections of lights on the metal pieces. It truly is just like a bell tower or a lighthouse. I think everyone could have their own interpretation of artistic work, so maybe our viewers could have your own comments telling us about your imagination and inspiration of those collections. We are going to see more of those works. The theme of this year's biennial is called Seeing the Future. Some media groups translated the words into constructing all sorts of possibilities. What's your take on the theme? Actually, I think uh, one plain translation is about facing the future, because we are using all possibilities to build the future. We hope to call upon people's awareness about protecting history and culture, particularly in the city background of Havana. Havana has a lot of uh, collections of historical heritages and cultural heritages. And because of the years it has undergone, and because of the inadequate protection by the government, cities like Havana will face a lot of urban issues. And the government really hopes to call upon others to protect those historical cities based on our current situations in order to embrace the possible future. That's why we theme this biennial under that topic, in order to think upon the future of Havana. We are not denying our past. We are thinking about the future based on our past history. So the topic is actually about bearing in mind the past and looking into the future. We are focusing more on the social issues um, and the current issues of Latin America. Now we are looking at the seaside view. It's a local feature. The locals really love to fish standing on the dam. Now we are coming to the second work. We are seeing all sorts of chairs and an antenna standing right there. All of those chairs are facing towards the direction of the sea. It's like all of the chairs are looking into the far. The name of this work is called 7.30 in the evening. On February the 21st in 1921, we have uh, taken down the time of sunset on that day. That's the date when the first Cuban constitution was 
put into effect. So we want to commemorate that time about 7:30 in the evening when the constitution was coming into effect. We want to take back this scene about how people sit by the seaside with their chairs put on the bank, and we can see that if we look into the far. On the opposite side of the sea, we are seeing a lot of uh, modern buildings. We hope to use uh, such art to, to uh, trigger people's ideas and thoughts. Usually, what music are on in the evening? We will have some band playing the music here to make certain atmosphere for people's reflections. So, at to 7.30 in the evening, if it's the right time for sunset in Cuba, then I believe all of the audience, the spectators, will have a perfect view here. Let's move on. Right in front of us, we're seeing a landmark in Havana. It's a castle. The Spanish colonies used to build such a castle to fend off those evaders, particularly pirates. They have their evening routine in the Moro Castle. And this work is called After the War. My interpretation is based on the name of it, all of the collections are shown behind the wall, behind the dam, along the seaside. So what's your take on the artistic meaning of uh, that name? Seaside Road is a very important public space for the local people. It's a pedestrian road along the sea, and Havana locals are used to drink and date and dance together in the evening in the public space. Physically, it's like the boundary of a city between the land and the ocean. And it's also the boundary for Cuba, because on the other side of the sea is the Miami port in the US. So really, the word of war has a lot of significance. If we talk broader, it's like um, a wall of different cultures, particularly between such um, dominant cultures in America and against the uh, third world culture, like Latin America. We are using those artistic forms to call upon the whole people in the world to pay attention to culture in the third world. Your ideas really are realistic, because even in the Americas, the U.S. has intensified their sanctions against Cuba. So with so many sanctions, their artistic expressions are really showing the local vibrance. It's like using their own manners to voice against the dominant power in the world. The locals are really thinking about international situation. They are calling upon peace and coexistence. The artists are using the artistic works to express their ideas about the local social problems in Latin America, particularly in uh, Cuba, like uh, the cities uh, facing a lot of uh, issues like uh, drug trafficking. And also, Latin America is highly recognizing some uh, uh, local indigenous culture. I have some questions. Since I am a layman of arts, sometimes I feel art is quite um, uh, comprehensive. And sometimes I feel those artistic pieces are beautiful from the outside, but I cannot look into the inside. I don't know uh, what's the contents that the artists want to express. So my question is, for a layman like me, how shall we look at and appreciate those artistic pieces in order to be one part of those artistic world? That's quite a common 
question. Some people feel like I don't know art and I'm not part of it. So I think the first step is to put aside that understanding. It's not irrelevant to common people. We must have a curious mind and we shouldn't be uh, bound by our own prejudices. Art could trigger our thoughts. It's more about the instant feelings, the instincts. So we could uh, take a tour around the exhibition, just like when we are touring any spot. You could get the most direct feelings from the works. And also, you could learn some background information about the artists in order to get some preview about those works. And after the exhibition, you could compare your feelings afterwards with the preview. So there is no perfect or fixed answer to one artistic work. Everyone could have their own feelings. And another point is, in the fashion world or the art world, we are facing a trend about to democracy. Those art world is not serving the aliens. It's more targeted at the public. So those artists are usually taking the stage of the city to express their ideas. The simplest way is that if you really cannot uh, comprehend the arts, you could take photos with the arts. It's the most direct interaction with those works. I totally agree with what you said. In the daytime, we are seeing a lot of tourists taking photos here. And also, I do feel that uh, after my interaction with the artistic works, I will be more impressed. It's far stronger impression than the photos I look only in the museums or the galleries. If you have the conditions or if you have connections like a guide, professional guide, to give you more information, you will have more impressions and experience. Everyone can comprehend art in their own way. It's just that if they have the right mentality to comprehend the art, I think with the right mind and the right attitude, you will appreciate art in your own way. When I am standing in front of a piece of work, I don't know what it is. I'm just guessing the meaning of the artist. That's a very interesting process. Yes, it's exactly the process of your own thinking. You're inspired with your own thoughts. If that happens, the artist already did what he was supposed to. Now we are walking beside such a big ball. Let's uh, walk distantly from it in order to have a broad view. Every time I pass by the street, this ball seems quite significant to me. It's very big. And in the front side, there are some uh, um, alphabets, C, no. It's about yes or no. And also, on the ball, there are a lot of uh, hard covers, paper covers. And there are words printed on the pieces. Let's walk closer to read. On every piece of those hard covers, there will be some words. Some are handwritten, some are printed there. It's actually the platform for interaction between the uh, officials and the common people. It's created by a female artist in Cuba. She was creating this ball to present us the image of females. We usually use the shape of round or a ball to represent females because that shape of round represents the start of human beings' lives. So it's just like a circle of a life. And on the outside, she was cooperating with many local Cuban artists. 
She cited a lot of comments from those artists. And mostly the contents of those words are about fighting for female rights. In Latin America, the society is usually dominated by the males. So she was calling our attention to the fact that usually female's voice is uh, prohibited. And she was citing a lot of comments about uh, the equality between genders in order to trigger our thoughts about the situation. You're seeing that a lot of uh, cartoons are put on here. It's mostly about female. I read some of the contents before. Here is a letter from Rocio Galleria. It's a very famous female artist in Cuba. She was giving out her voice on behalf of the artistic world in Cuba. Those works are standing quite near to each other along the sea. There are in total about 60 works in this corridor, and they are scattered in five kilometers along the sea. And when we are taking a walk casually, we can feel free to appreciate those works. That is exactly the charm of public goods. We don't have to go into the doors like a museum to appreciate works. People sometimes feel reluctant to go into that space. And also, such a public space presenting the artworks is for free. Now we're walking to another work. They are piling up a lot of radios together. It's in the shape of a fan. Does it look familiar to you? In the 1980s and 1990s, we usually use uh, radios that looked quite similar to those. When we were young, we used to listen to a lot of uh, advertisement songs in those radios. It's also a reflection about social progress. With the technological development, very few people will listen to radios, and people even seldom listen to music. We usually go to the website to get what we want, like music. So radios are mostly already uh, left behind by the society. Now they are using cement to rebuild the shapes of the radios. It's like a monument of radios. It's like um, a way of commemorating the role of radios in history. Even though it's already taken out of the history with the modern technology development and with the social development, we're still taking radios in our memories. It's not a sad news, even though the monument looks like a tomb. On the other hand, it's a miniature of the history. For us born in the 1970s and 1980s, such a monument or such a so-called tomb could uh, remind us about our own past, our own childhood. Yes, when I look at such radios, it was reminiscent of my childhood. What about the artist creating uh, such a work here? Uh, is he or she using radio now in Cuba? Very few people in Cuba use radios now. They have their own speakers, so radios are replaced right now. It's very interesting work. So you can indeed feel some of those arts because they echo in your hearts and they share some of the life experience with you. It's just like um, a collection of your own past life. With 20 meters more in front of us, we are going to bump into another work. It's also like a stone monument. And there are some letters printed or engraved on the monument. They look like passwords. And lying on the ground, there are also the high heels 
in made of stone. Let's move closer to look at those. It looks like a cardboard, and there are a lot of、uh, high heels falling from the board. And the name of the work is called La Blabra, and in English it means words. You're seeing the screws on the side. It's quite subtle. Unlike the other works, the meanings of this work are not quite as straightforward. We have to guess the meanings. What's your take? The artist comes from Spain, and he's from Basque. It's a minority place. My personal understanding is the artist wants to use this work to show the meaning of words. If you look at this shape, it's like a dictionary. Sometimes we feel the words are speechless; they didn't give out sound, and they don't feel a thing. But actually, in the society, words matter a lot. They are playing very important roles. That's why the artist is making such a dictionary, and the screws on the side represent harms coming from those words, which we may neglect. And also, the book is opening to us. It's about opening people's mouth. And with the high heels coming out, I think it represents the、uh, forbidding or banning of words from females. High heels represent women. Many of those works send out some symbols. Those symbols represent、uh, the communication situation, and I think high heels represent the status of female. It's not just one high heel. There are a lot of them, so they represent the whole group of females. Some information to you. This year's biennial is quite significant because 2019 marks the 500th anniversary of、uh, Havana. So it's about、uh, such a tribute to the Havana city, which undergoes about 500 years of history. In the recent two years, the government already started with the renovation or reconstruction work in the city. So they're not just paying attention to the construction, but also the artistic look of those buildings. For example, if we look at the old town here on that side. We are seeing a cluster of buildings, particularly on the opposite side of the seaside road. Most of those old buildings have been refurbished in order to commemorate the 500th anniversary of Havana. And on that direction, we are seeing a very brand new building. It was a new hotel. And. Along that street, we are seeing a building under construction now. It's also a hotel. If we turn left, it's the famous avenue called Prado Avenue. It was exactly the place for the show of Chanel. So there are a lot of、uh, exhibitions and arts being exhibited right now on that avenue. And on the opposite street, we also have a lot of exhibitions. There are some galleries. And paintings on that avenue. It's like an extension of the seaside world. So some of the works from the artists will also be exhibited on that avenue. It's quite interesting, and people are really participating. If time allows, I recommend you to go there. Many of the photos are quite interesting. This is going to be the last work in the eastern side of the seaside road. It's composed of five sculptures. The first four sculptures are facing our direction, and the last one is facing the opposite direction. Maybe there are some Oriental elements in the work, from the way、uh, they are sitting. I don't know what it's expressing. 
The artist is called Mascaro. He is very famous. The name of this work is called Protection. They are using a lot of uh, waste uh, steel scraps to build the sculpture. You said about the oriental elements. It's quite right because the artist was inspired by the local culture in Mexico. Especially, the inspiration came from such a Buddhist uh, sculpture. So that's why. It has some oriental elements. Then they use the industrial waste to build such sculptures. And you're seeing that uh, those sculptures are just like uh, doing the yoga. They seem to be in peace. That's my interpretation. Exactly. It felt to me that they are just meditating. And also, they are recycling the wastes. Yes, he also wants to express to us about uh, conservation of materials. We shouldn't just uh, give up the original materials or facilities. Instead, based on the existing materials, we shall seek further development. Interesting. This is about the end of the exhibition. It's already one week uh, since the Havana Biennial was kicked off. You must be uh, being to the other exhibitions. Do you have some recommendations? I recommend you to go to the National Museum and also the uh, gallery at national level will give us a lot of regular exhibitions. For example, some very famous Cuban artists and some international artists will exhibit their works there. And um, another gallery I recommend you is called the Evergreen Gallery. The gallery is dedicated to the urban development. It's also uh, part of the uh, major galleries. They set up a new space in a theater locally. They have very uh, smaller number of works, but they are of high quality. And another space is in an industrial park. It's in a factory. Mostly the works in that factory is from Cuban artists. And also here in this gallery, we have about 10 Chinese artists showing their works. Thank you for your suggestion. Particularly, you said about the Chinese artists. I went there, and I love them. A lot of Chinese culture can be uh, experienced there. I think uh, most uh, of those locals must be very interested in those works. That's why it is quite an attraction. And for the Evergreen Gallery, I love it as well. Before the Cubans' establishment, that place used to be a theater operated by the Chinese, and now that gallery is the professional place for exhibitions. So it's like an injection of dynamism and life into that space. And it's an extension of the Cuban culture. After the Havana Biennial, how will the local government deal with those collections? For such public collections, they are beautifying the city. After the ending of each biennial, most artists will choose to donate their works to the Havana government. And the municipal government will consider the connection between the works and the urban plan of Havana to decide whether those works will be placed upon the original space. On the old plaza, there is a sculpture about a woman riding a bicycle. And in the commercial zone, there is a sculpture of elephant. And we also are seeing a lot of um, uh, traffic lights on the road. I still remember a sculpture of a woman also along the seaside. Yes, they are left there from the previous biennials. So we really want to pass on the happiness from the works. It's really a good news if some of the works can be maintained. So we will still visit those major landmarks or works after the biennial. They are telling us the role of public arts and its relationship with sustainable urban development. 
We are approaching the end of this live stream. Thank you, Mr. Sun, for your sharing. I learn a lot. I feel like uh, art is beside us. It's everywhere in our lives. Everyone can appreciate arts in the urban life. And many thanks to our viewers. Thank you for watching.